we had a real Mexican standoff. Two attorneys who wouldn't budge in a medical malpractice case in the middle of a pretrial question and answer session known as a deposition. You want to know what this is about? Come join me on this walk through the neighborhood as I share with you exactly what this is about. Hi, I'm Jerry Ojinski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. It is a beautiful day today here in Great Neck. It's about 30 degrees cooler than it was two days ago, so it's a crisp 55 degrees right now, and I wanted to share some great information with you. All right, so now I'm at a deposition, which is a pretrial question and answer session, where I have an opportunity to question the doctor in this medical malpractice case. Or alternatively, the defense lawyer has an opportunity to question my client. So now, this defense lawyer is questioning my client. We started at 10 a.m., and now this is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I knew this would go on for at least another hour. So now the defense attorney asked my client to question, and now, what did I do? I objected. I said, objection, counselor. I object to the form of your question. And he said to me, there's nothing wrong with my question. I want an answer to my question. I said, well, I disagree with you. I disagree because the question is not phrased properly. If you want to go ahead and rephrase your question, my client will be more than happy to answer the question. And now the attorney turned around and said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with my question. She has to answer it. Are you directing her not to answer, counselor? What does that mean? Am I directing her not to answer? You should know in these pretrial question and answer sessions, now there are only really two instances where I can tell my client not to answer the question. The first is where the attorney asks, what did I talk to my client about? Well, guess what? That is privileged information. That is confidential information and my client will not answer that question. The second type of question that I can tell my client not to answer is something that is palpably improper something that is so off the wall, ridiculous, and having nothing to do with the claims in the case or the defenses in the case, in that instance, I can go ahead and tell my client, do not answer the question. Otherwise, my client technically has to answer every question, even though I am objecting to the way the question is asked. Now, you may ask yourself, why would an attorney go ahead and object to the way a question is phrased? What difference does it make? Actually, there's a big difference. Questions are so subtle that sometimes you can ask it one way and it could mean something totally different. The defense lawyer asked my client a question such as, why did you go ahead and sue my doctor? Objection. That's an improper question. Ask another one. There's nothing wrong with my question, counselor. Actually, there is because that calls for a legal conclusion as well as expert testimony to determine exactly why we sued your doctor. So this is the patient who claims that she suffered significant harm and injury because your doctor was careless. That is an improper question. So what do we do in that instance where I am not permitted to go ahead and tell my client, don't answer that question, and the defense lawyer is refusing to budge because he thinks he phrased his question appropriately? Well, now we've got an issue, and it could be a significant issue. So now what happens? So now the attorneys get into an argument. Now we have an argument and the court stenographer is recording all of this information. At some point, one attorney or both will either agree or back off. That's what happens. Or they will turn around and say, you know what, mark it for a ruling. And what does that mean? It means that the court stenographer makes a little notation in the transcript that says it's marked for a ruling. And what does that mean? It means that after the deposition is over, when the attorney gets the transcript of the questions that he asked and the answers that my client gave, he now has to make a decision, a tactical decision, about what to do next. Should he go ahead and ask the court to intervene and ask the court to take some type of action because the client was not allowed to answer that question? That's a difficult decision. Many times what the attorney will do is he'll say, you know what, it's not worth the time and effort and energy to try and get the court to do something now because it's highly unlikely that the court will do something over one single question because it was not a pattern, it did not go on repeatedly throughout the deposition. So instead, he may save that until the time of trial. And now if the question comes up, and it will come up at the time of trial, now he can address it with the trial judge. That is likely what's going to happen. If, on the other hand, we were fighting throughout the entire deposition and there were many, many instances where I went ahead and told my client not to answer, which is against the court rules, then the defense attorney would be well within his right to ask the court to take action, 
to either sanction me or to compel the client to come back and answer more questions or to compel her to answer the questions that I refuse to allow her to answer. So there are many different options where the attorney can show a pattern and an excessive pattern throughout the course of the deposition. But is that what happened here? No. This is one instance where we were butting heads and you know what happened? The attorney turned around and said, okay, mark it for a ruling. And then he moved on to the next set of questions. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you because it's a beautiful day today here in Great Neck and I just wanted to show you exactly what happens in these medical malpractice cases that goes on behind the scenes. Stuff you don't hear about, stuff you don't see every day and certainly you don't see this on TV. You know, I realize you're likely watching this video because you wanted to join me in this beautiful walk through the neighborhood. No, I realize you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen here in New York, but you have not yet started a lawsuit and are thinking of bringing one, but haven't done so yet and still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516 487 8207 or by email at jerry, G E R R Y, at oginski law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.